There. Boom. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, hi, everybody. It's July 25th. You're here at the Chaos Community Call. It's one of those days for all of us, a lot of us, maybe not everyone, but for a lot of us, things aren't working properly sometimes. Okay, there we go. That works though, right? Move my chat over here. Um, yeah, I hope everyone's doing well. If you've not, I'll just leave a little more space here. If you have not attended one of these meetings, I do see a new face. Welcome, Winifred. Good to see you again. Thanks for coming. Um, my buddy in uh, Newcomer Hangout <laughs> this morning, we had a good chat about sports and getting excited about your team doing well. Um, how it gets your heart going. Anyway, um, yeah, so if you've not been to this meeting or if you're watching this for the first time, this is our chaos community call where we kind of get together as a, a large community and um, just talk about things that are pertinent to our community. We bring up issues or questions or topics. Sometimes we do announcements here. Um, and this is part of the chaos code of conduct. So just keep that in mind as you interact with us today. You can keep your camera on, keep it off, whatever, whatever you want to do, whatever's more comfortable for you. And if you want to just interact in the chat, that's also completely valid. Um, it's really up to you, however you want to interact with us. So we do record these meetings, as you heard, um, we do post them. So uh, that's just another thing to keep in mind. If you're not comfortable with your face on camera or any of your information, that's co absolutely completely 100% valid. So just keep that in mind and know that that's kind of what we do with these meetings. Um, okay, so the first thing is, oh, and if you have not added your name to the agenda as an attendee and you'd like to, you are more than welcome to do that. Um, again, just completely up to you. You don't have to. You don't want to. Um, okay, so the first item on here is something that I did not add. So I hopefully the person who did add it is here today. Yes, I, I, I am. I am. This arose from a discussion that um, occurred uh, after one of our meetings last week. And then Sophia and I discussed it further in the um, risk meeting this past, last week. Uh, the, I, the, the, the thing is, there are some design decisions embedded in both Grimoire Lab and Augur that are not brought to the surface. And the most significant recent example is that both repositories only count commit activity that occurs in the branch that is the main branch on the platform. And so commits that never make it to the platform don't get counted as contributions by individuals who, who make those contributions. And that's, that is sort of an assumption that's been embedded in the tooling around chaos from the very beginning, really more out of, uh, I mean, the concern about, well, what is a contribution how do you determine that and we identified the main branch and so that's a design choice and then another motivation for this design choice is pragmatics because if we were to look at all of the branches and all of the forks and all of their commits it would significantly uh, it could exponentially expand the scope of analysis required for certainly for very large repositories and also to, to a lesser extent smaller repositories so the fact that these design decisions are not sort of foregrounded or visible to the people who use our tools means that if somebody wants to understand the full scope of a developer's contributions to a project, there is not an opportunity to do that with chaos tooling. Um, there are some features in Augur that allow you to get a sense of those contributions, but they depend on uh, an ephemeral um, uh, developer or GitHub user event stream that used to go on for 40 pages of 100 events, but now just is hard coded at two months. So, all right, I'll stop talking. So when you say foreground these decisions, is it like foregrounding it for people who might use the software? Yeah, like um, I think it's I mean I think it's sensible to just make. And this is one example of a design choice, but there are probably other design decisions that that are made in each of the tools that I think it would be helpful after talking at some length with Sophia, I think it'd be helpful for 
people who are trying to consume the tools with a particular objective just to know what the constraints on the data collection are um, in, the, in each case. So for example, this is related to, everything I've talked about is related to commits. When it comes to pull requests, we do not constrain that based on what the pull which branches or forks the pull request merges to. So when we look at pull request activity, it gets everything, even if it's a pull request between two non-main branches or between a fork and a non-main branch. Um, so this that constraint does not exist for pull requests, but it does exist for commits across all of the tools that Chaos has. Yeah, I guess thank you for sharing that, Sean. I think I guess the the sort of conclusion here and the recommendation that we kind of came to is just having more transparency on the design choices and the data model behind the tools. Um, and I think now that you're saying it, Sean, I I have a whole new view on it now, which is great. Um, in that I think seeing the emergence of multiple tools like this, our own included, as well as other things that other projects, communities and platforms are doing and similarly collecting and exposing metrics like this. I think the more transparent we are with our own data models behind our software tooling, uh, the easier it is for folks to compare and understand the differences between them. Um, so I think I know I've, I've personally struggled looking at other dashboards to know exactly how they're counting and what they're counting um, and having to kind of dig into the depths of the documentation to try to figure it out. And it's not always there. Yeah. Uh, and so if we can make our sort of design choices more visible and in, in the project that I think that's just what helped for understanding of the tool, the platform, and also how it compares to other tools, how results or metrics might compare to cal like different types or styles of calculation, knowing that there is nuance here. Um, and so just kind of, if we can make that clear, um, that would be great. And it could be like a, I don't know, like something like a design doc. It doesn't have to be a super detailed on the data model. I know I've had a couple conversations with the Grimoire Lab team too, as well, um, in terms of being more, having more public documentation on their data model, just so again, people can be more aware of these, these nuances and how they might compare to other things. Yeah. So I, I was immediately that link right there, the KB Chaos Community. Can you click on that? So, you know, we're in the process of doing quite a bit of redesign on the documentation that we share with folks because it had gotten kind of out of date or a little yeah. overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm kind of looking at the tiles that we have here and thinking about how such a document could be presented. Um, we do have groups, which it takes you to software, but the software projects just ultimately takes you to the repositories of those yeah. projects. Which so is software, maybe a software and tools box, unless we were trying to constrain. The yeah, boxes. the other is up there where Elizabeth is pointing as well. Oh, yeah. there. So maybe a doc here or some statement here yeah this needs to be re kind of probably revisited anyway yeah is um so for the knowledge base um, mm -hmm. i i think i can probably poke around and figure out how to edit it but if there's a do, is the i assume the knowledge base is edited edited directly on the wordpress site or is it edited elsewhere I like it in GitHub. This is the community repo of GitHub. Okay, it's in the community repo of GitHub. Oh. Thank you. You can find it if you want. Nope, I just needed to make a note of where to look. Once I know where to look, I can find stuff. Okay, yeah, it's in here. This should match the tiles, so. Except my keys, which I always put in a place I won't forget and then forget. I couldn't find mine this morning either, Sean. <laughs> we are just going through it today. I don't know <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> stars are out of alignment or something. I don't know. Yeah, okay. What, yeah. I have uh, a key bowl. <laughs> nice. I need to get one. I don't have one. I just keep them in my purse. And if it's not there, then it's just a free for all. Although I do have one of those little tile things. Yeah. To help me. But now the battery's dead of the tile. So it's not super helpful. Really. No, that makes it much less useful. Yeah. I just can't get it together. I can't. 
Um, okay, so okay, so back over here. Are we gonna do, like give Sean that action item, or does somebody want to work on? I could take a I could take a first draft at editing that and share it back with the group next week. Um, okay, well, make my end of July bucket list. Do you need someone from Grimoire Lab to also chime in on this, Sean? If or if, if there's somebody, uh, I don't think there's anybody on the call. I can. Uh, I'll just message in the Grimoire Lab chat that we're going to update that, and um, I'm going to take a shot at it. But Grimoire Lab folks are also welcome to do it. Like I, I think I know enough about Grimoire Lab to take a punch at it. But obviously, nothing that I write about Grimoire Lab should be published without their review. I'm linking to the doc where you can make that PR, Sean. Right Thank here. you. Thank yeah, you. you're welcome. And this, oh, this is an assumption again, based on like a conversation I had six months ago with some Grimoire Lab folks. Um, <laughs> but there was interest in creating more documentation around the data model on their public sites. So I think they might. There's a chance they could be working on something like this already. It might not be exactly like this. It might be more detailed. But I think it would be roughly the same information. So I think it's worth reaching out before you write something just in case they might have it already. Related to that, I'm, I am kind of wondering if the misinformation would be more appropriate in the auger documentation as well than in the chaos documentation. It's for the, for the yeah, I think it's a whole lot of detail on either Augur, Grimoire Lab, or Kregit. We generally just kind of point to point to those projects where needed. Yeah, I think my view is evolving toward thinking that providing some of this information on the chaos site is helpful as people are coming to the community increasingly for tools. So I, I agree that the full documentation for each tool should not be on the chaos website. I, I think we could do more than we we could provide more framing than we do know in my thought. I guess my my concern for it a little bit is uh, out of date information or uh, information that may be different on the chaos site versus what's on Augur or Grimoire Lab. Uh, so that that would be my concern, but but I would defer to your your judgment on that. I think that's a good point. I mean, this is one of the things that has actually prompted a lot of the redesign of the like the knowledge base is out of date information. And it is hard to keep it up to date. And then to Kevin's point, well, that is his point. <laughs> and then like further on that point, like as we're, we have a group of people that maintain the knowledge base and the website via WordPress, as soon as we get several layers um, deeper of needing information from other people, it just gets harder and harder to maintain that on the website. So, I mean, maybe it would be something, what would y'all think like on something similar to like the knowledge base? Like if you could go back to that for a second, just go to the software one, like how we just point here you know, to the different places. Perhaps there's a particular place we can point to the content. Would that help alleviate things for you, Kevin? Uh, yes, yeah, we can do that. And alternately, if I mean, if you really do want the full page or the full information populated on the website, we could do that as well. I would just say, don't keep it in the knowledge base, keep it in Augur and then just let us know where to pull that information from. Okay. Right, so no, I can see. Sure. Yeah, this is on the website, right? This is not the knowledge base. The information that's being pulled right now is being pulled from the uh, from the knowledge base. But we can pull we can pull information uh, onto the website from any GitHub location. So we can pull it from Augur, we can pull it from Grimoire Lab, we can pull it from the community repo, which is what we do for the knowledge base. So the, this document that you're creating or this information that you're creating, we could pull it into the knowledge base or we could, we could even pull it into a, a page under, underneath the, uh, the software navigation up top if you wanted. Uh, directly, directly from Augur or we could 
or we can create pointers in existing documents that point to the information that you're creating. I guess those are the those are the two options. Maybe um, I'll. Is there a web meeting this week or is it next week? Uh, I'm not sure. Let me look real quick. I'm just. I'm thinking probably should. I should just um, ask the yeah. technical questions I have in the web meeting instead of taking up more time here. It's tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll be at the web meeting tomorrow. And that and should maybe, ensure. Maybe just in the meantime, to like, I just started a shared document here. This. You see that in the minutes? Awesome. So, because like the content and where to put it can probably kind of be two different things. True. I'm also thinking we might want to document where we're pulling it from just in case somebody says, oh, this needs to be changed on, they see it on the website and it needs to be changed, but we're pulling from like different places on one page. We might want to just keep that somewhere. I don't know. That, yeah, that could get super confusing real fast, right? Yeah. But we can definitely continue this in the knowledge race meeting tomorrow, which if anybody's interested is at 8.30 a.m. U.S. Central right here. So join us to chat about it. All right. Yeah, that's I think it's the best place to ask any questions I have beyond this scope. Thanks for bringing this up, Sean and Sophia as well. That was a good yeah. conversation. So if you brought it up and I was just curious what these design decisions are and we talked about it and got here. Yeah, it's super important. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on. Um, the next one is this context working group liaisons. Matt, I'm not sure if you want to talk about this. Or not. A dog is snoring. Oh, yeah, it's Lucy. Sorry. <laughs> It took me like a minute to think about. It. I thought for a while it was Sean. <laughs> ah, thanks, dude. Sean. I don't know. Thank you. I'm, I'm nothing if not <laughs> snoring all the time during these calls. He's just got eyes painted on his glasses. <laughs> what? <Huh? laughs> to make us think he's awake. Yeah. Well, I was My looking. He was unmuted, and I'm like, Sean's the only one unmuted. And so. Yeah. Well, apparently not. <laughs> that whole conversation was just Chat GPT generated from Sean. Yeah. Wow, I should, <laughs> I should actually write that. <laughs> yeah, sorry. All right, so any, anyway. Anywho. Um, anywho, um, Matt, do you want to talk about professional? It, yeah, in, Slack in, the, in the general channel, um, I had posted something, I think, on Friday. We're looking for a couple context working group liaisons, and it was kind of a long post, so I'll explain it a little bit here. Um, if we have three different context working groups, so um, corporate OSPOs, corporate open source program offices, scientific software, and universities. And basically in each one of these different contexts, people use metrics to, um, in different ways, they use metrics to tell stories in different ways or to, to use metrics to make decisions in different ways. In, in each of these context working groups, um, we were having conversations with really great people who are joining just about what are the metrics or metrics models that are meaningful to them or could provide this type of insight or help in, in the decision making process. So we're asking these context groups really just to talk openly about things that could necessarily benefit uh, the work that they do. There, there are situations where they talk about metrics or metrics models that may not have been developed so far, so they don't exist, but they they feel these members of these context working groups or context groups feel that these metrics or metrics models could really provide value, but again, they don't exist. So what we're, what we're doing is we're not asking those context working groups to develop the metrics or metrics models. We're kind of trying to abstract the details of like working with chaos templates and going through the chaos publication process, we're kind of trying to abstract that whole process from these context working groups, not get into the details too much. So as a result, we're asking for a few people to serve as liaisons who could attend these context working groups. 
you would pick one that you're interested in attending, say corporate OSPOs or scientific software or universities. Um, you would listen to the conversation and kind of make notes of where new metrics are being talked about or new metrics models are being talked about. You'd really just kind of make a note to yourself or make a note to the group. Um, you would then also attend the Chaos Common Working Group meeting, which is where we do a lot of the actual development of the metrics and metrics models. So if I was a liaison for the Corporate OSPO, I would attend the Corporate OSPO Working Group meeting. I would listen to the metrics and metrics models that are being talked about. And then I would also attend the Chaos Common Working Group meeting and tell that group, hey, here are a couple metrics and metrics models that came from that context working group. These are the ones that need to be developed. Finally, the liaison would help uh, provide an initial draft of the metrics or metrics models that need to be developed. It would not be perfect by any means, but just using the chaos template, kind of you know, um, filling out the description component, what the description of this new metric would be or this new metric model would be, um, why we would need this new metric or metric model, just kind of following the templates that we already have, have constructed. So the liaison, hopefully this is making sense. The liaison would essentially attend two different meetings. They'd attend the meeting that is the context working group to which they have an interest. And they would attend a meeting of the common working group, really just helping us build metrics and metrics models. Um, we do have um, a volunteer for, um, I see Ruth is volunteering for the OSPO context group. So thank you, Ruth. Um, Jen has also volunteered to participate as the liaison for university, Jen Colt. So thank you, Jen, for that. Um, and we can have, it, it would probably make sense to have more than one liaison for each of these. So in this case, like if somebody would like to be a liaison with Ruth, yep, we definitely can. I think it would make sense, in fact, Mary Blessing, to have two uh, liaisons. Um, just because we... I was going to say, I think it's, it's also possible to create liaisons for task specific uh, uh, activities when we need to. Yeah. So the ask it really is just to be super clear, you, the ask is really to make sure that you attend the context working group and the common working group. And you kind of, you provide insight for both. You see what I'm saying? You, you, you kind of link, help link those two together. Look at that. <laughs> Sai, do you have an idea of which one of these you would like to help with? Um, okay, I could work with um, scientific. I mean, I could give it a try. It'd be great. You don't have to, in all of these cases, I think this is, so thank you, everybody. This is really great. Like it's, I don't know that you like have to be an expert in any of these areas. It's mostly just about listening to the metrics and metrics models that these groups are talking about. So yeah, I think it's um, we we're those of us who are here have some knowledge of chaos that many people in these other communities don't have yet. Um, and so when it comes to how can chaos help me, your questions about how to approach getting metrics and chaos or chaos tools, I think just whatever knowledge you have of chaos, even if you're relatively new, is likely greater than many of the participants in these working groups. So the, the like, what you consider yourself an expert because you are here. Can I, uh, can I kind of create a narrative around what a, what a liaison could, could do in one of these context groups? Yeah, fire away, Kevin. Uh, so the, the liaison, for example, could go to the, the university uh, uh, context group and, and listen to the university group talk and when the university group comes up with a, a metric or a model that they think is really interesting the, the li liaison then becomes the, 
the point of contact for that metric, right? So the, uh, the liaison can describe the metric to them if it already exists in chaos. If it doesn't exist, then the liaison could propose taking that metric to the, the common working group to have it bind. Uh, so then the, the liaison would take the metric to the, the common working group, we would define it, uh, and then the liaison would present that defined metric back to the context working group uh, to to validate it, if you will, to uh, as as a kind of a a way of uh, uh, checking the release before we release it. Right on. Um, well, this is great. Uh... Thank you everybody so much. Um, you can take a look at the, I think we actually have all three context working group meetings this week. So you could take a look at the chaos calendar and they should be there. And in the meeting, I'd be happy to introduce you as the liaison and just kind of the, the role for everybody to understand. So thank you. All right, uh, I'm 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 doing the meeting now. Elizabeth left, she had a, yeah. another. So. All right. Welcome, uh, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, welcome. <laughs> uh, so uh, update on the risk. Well, I'm sorry. Were there any questions? And maybe to Anita, Basayo, Mary Blessing, Ruth, would, would it make, do you, would you like to have another session where we talk about this? Or do you think you understand enough to just kind of move forward? And if you have questions, we can address those questions later. My question, but I think maybe something we can do is kind of like have a document that describes, I don't know if we, we, we have that, like a document that kind of describes is um, like the tax or what a liaison will do. And so that we also always like reference back to it and, you know, have yeah. documents or templates, things that liaison will work with. So, Okay, I can put that together, Ruth. Great, thank you. Okay, a little merry blessing, there it is. <laughs> so, awesome, thank you. Um, so Sean, Sophia, update on risk working group meetings. Go for Sophia. Um, okay. Does she explain uh, really, her and David Wheeler really kind of develop these thoughts? Yeah. So the the short version is that the risk working group has had a small but mighty crew for the last couple of months, maybe Years. three to five people per meeting. Um, always good conversations, but we have noticed that a lot of these sort of risk oriented conversations are now happening in other places and all of us are ending up participating in many meetings as a result of that um and so the thought process was that we don't want to have too many meetings we would like to have less meetings um, but we recognize that risk is still a really important topic that we would like to discuss and have a chaos outlet for um, but trying trying to balance those two things we figured we would cancel our regular meeting, but instead still have an, a document, an agenda document that people can add to. And if we hit enough things on that agenda, then we'll float a meeting um, more ad hoc versus a regularly scheduled meeting. Um, more specifically, uh, risk and sort of viability conversations have been happening in the also working group, uh, very much around sort of understanding consum consumption risk around open source software. Um, and then it's also happening in OpenSSF. There's a risk dashboard working group um, that is attempting to design a dashboard to assess the risk of any project that a individual or a company might want to import and use in their own context. Um, and of course, there are there's a metrics component to that. So I've, I've started going to that. I know David Wheeler is also helping to run that effort. Um, and I know Sean is trying to join a few more of those meetings. And yeah. We wanted to support it as chaos, um, but also again, recognize that that's yet another meeting on people's calendar. So um, the risk working group is not going away, but it is pausing in frequency. Um, we'll keep the Slack up. We'll keep the meeting list um, available so that we want to float a, float a meeting. We will let people know with ample notice 
um, but the regular meeting is now being removed from the calendar. Sean, do you have more thoughts? No, I think that's why I asked you to, that's why I was hoping you would cover it because I think you did that very succinctly and clearly, so thank you. I would have rambled, as we've seen. <laughs> and maybe snored. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think this is great. Um, I like the idea of, I agree that a lot of this is happening in the OSPO working group. It's happening whatever, Wednesday or Thursday of this week. Um, I also like the idea of, I'm not familiar with this meeting, but if there already is a, a group of people talking about these things around a risk-related dashboard to which chaos could play a role, great, have that conversation <laughs> there. It's not like they have to happen. Yeah, I, I, I think that yeah. that's kind of what's, as Sophia pointed out, that's exactly what's happening. Like we're having these discussions elsewhere, so. Mm -hmm. But but I think Sophia also made a point in our meeting that I think is important, which is that we still think there is a role for chaos. And so that's the purpose of the document that when we do have enough or we need a metric or a metric model around risk, uh, keeping that document going and scheduling meetings ad hoc gives us the opportunity to do that. Okay. Do you have more information on this meeting? Is it open to the public? Is it which meeting? Or the open SSF risk dashboard meeting? Yeah, it is. It's on the um, open SSF uh, meeting site, which I couldn't tell you where that is, but I, let me see if I can find it while we go on to the next topic. Can you drop it in the yep. minute? I'm going to okay. find it. And Sophia, if you find it first, that's cool. Okay, because other people might want to attend that as well. Absolutely. Uh, uh, do, do we uh, We maybe want to create a, uh, a risk liaison? Uh, to make sure we uh, are keeping in touch with the risk folks. I'd be happy to do that. I kind of feel like I am slightly a risk liaison already. Okay. But I love uh, there's just an open I, channel. I think, I think Sophia is our risk liaison by <laughs> default. She's been doing the job for two years now, so at least. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I mean, that would help track like metrics and metrics models that may be coming out of discussions that are here kind of thing. Um, okay, great. Sophia, are you available for the common meeting or? I need to look that up right now because I hadn't planned to be, but I can look for it. Which, what time is it? Sorry, I can look at the calendar, but it's not up right now. Um, it's on... Um... Isn't it usually um, Thursdays at 10? Yeah, it's Thursdays at 11 o'clock your time every other week. Twice a month. Yeah, so it's not this week. It won't be, it'll be next week. Um, yeah, because then it sounds like it's not conflicting with the OSPO one, right? So. That's right. It's, it's designed, its schedule is designed not to conflict with the OSPO one. Yeah, and I think too, I mean, as we talk about this, like if there's nothing to bring to common, you could, that would be, you don't have to attend as the liaison. Like if there's no new metric or metric model or new, new task, I mean, you could just kind of put that on the notes and just say nothing to report and I think that'd be okay. <laughs> Cause I don't want you to re remove a meeting and then add one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I felt kind of bad asking that to be honest. <laughs> well, I'm, and Sophia, I'm usually in the common meeting, so I can share risk thoughts in the Slack channel as well if you can't make them. Yeah, we, we can too, because I know the two of us are active in the Slack channel. So yeah. if there are things to bring up, I'll still use that as a way to share updates and one of us will attend. Yeah, yeah. as long as somebody could bring a new model or metric forward to, the, to comment, that'd be cool. All right, okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, Couple other comments here. Um, any other questions on, on things related to risk? Related to what we were just talking about, I think the uh, the common agenda is probably going to have to uh, be structured so that it accommodates uh, the liaisons. So I, I will work on uh, changing that agenda and maybe. Uh, present that back here or or you think that's okay to just take care of it in common i think it would be okay in common 
but it's it made listening to you talk it made me think that we should have like a 20 minute window or 30 minute window dedicated to liaisons yeah reoccurring reoccurring spaces on the agendas for updates from liaisons for some such thing like that right yep yep so well thank you okay um and thanks for getting the calendar in there for those with an interest you can follow the link there and i think sean put it in the chat as well yeah both okay. permanent and ephemeral permanent great <laughs> permanent here ephemeral in the chat yeah, yeah. Um, yes correct update on the onboarding courses we do have an education channel i think there's just a few of us in there at the moment um, so if you have an interest in participating in really the development of a series of courses you know uh, hello world open source open source 101 whatever it might be kind of those very early engagements with open source and how um, classes might help people um, kind of address their early engagement with open source, not just the chaos project, but open source in general. I encourage you to, to join that. I think we're, we do have a, a, a onboarding course doc there. Um, I think one of the things that we're kind of looking at doing, or we talked about last week anyway, was have a couple different groups within this group. Um, one to kind of help focus on the content of the courses. Uh, as well as then the technology. So is this, just courses? to clarify, Matt, is yeah. the, are the, is this chaos onboarding course, is this for one course as a template for other courses? Or is so this I, intended to be multiple courses? So I, I think it looks are, like multiple courses. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I think there, I think we had talked about multiple courses in there. Yeah. We had, I, I see that now. I just had to scroll, which is hard work. <laughs> um, and I know that, that, um, I think Ruth has expressed interest, particularly around, I want to say, really just the intro to open source kind of course. Um, and so I, I think there is a couple to develop here. Um, and that's what this discussion would be about. So if you're interested, join the channel and join us in the DEI group. Um, would it be, so for, with regards to Moodle, yeah. um, since I've done this before, do you want me to install an initial version that we can then collectively configure together? Yeah, I mean, I think it would be good for demonstration purposes. Yeah, like it doesn't, if maybe it doesn't live there, maybe it's another Moodle instance, but yeah, if we had, if we had one that we could play with, we might get a clearer sense of how to make it work. Yeah. It, All right. That kind of thing's easy for me, so. Okay, yeah, I'll, if I'll you could do that. that, even for tomorrow, we have our DEI meeting. Yep. How tricky it is for you to even just connect. No, it's, I mean, I haven't done it in a while, but it shouldn't actually be very tricky at all. Like I do stuff like this all the time. All right, it'll be, uh, it'll be there by DEI tomorrow. Okay. There being some random internet address for now. Moodle for demo purposes. Thanks, Sean. No problem. And I think part of that, I mean, the group that would think about the technology, like remember we talked about it last week, like Google Classroom, Moodle, GitHub Classroom, like how all of that would yeah. fit. Together. Yeah, I could, yeah, I could, I could set up, I could try to set up Google and GitHub Classroom as well. Yeah, and I mean, GitHub Classroom probably, the way that works oftentimes is it links to a learning management system, so. Let me right. see if okay. I can. So then you have Moodle on the back end anyway. Yeah. Okay. It's I find it's easier to navigate that way. Yeah, let me I mean, if yeah, I mean, if you have like a easy demo that would be like here, you go to this GitHub classroom site and it explains what's available, and then you click this and it takes you out to our Moodle. You know. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that that's I can do this at the pool tonight. Um, all right, and then the last thing for the agenda there, we had talked about a chaos book club, tyranny of metrics, um, is simply reading this. Sean has two copies. Elizabeth has reached out. <laughs> um, of the many books I own, it's one of the two books I have two copies of. Because all right. Sometimes I'm an idiot. <laughs> well, now you, okay, so you can, <laughs> all right, perfect. <laughs> so I, I don't, I, I don't 
don't know if there's an audio version. I would, I think everything has an audio guys, version. If not, I could read one into a microphone and. Please, <laughs> please do that, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, you know, I don't have much update than what's beyond here. Um, if somebody wants to look it up on Audible, then let us do we, know. Do we, yeah, do we have a book channel club or a book club channel? Uh -oh. on slack or how do we plan to conduct this book club uh, yes. i'm not sure okay we can wait for next time with elizabeth we can wait till we all have the book yeah <laughs> all right uh that's it for everybody um does anybody have anything they want to add to the we're getting close to the end here I'm trying to think um are we should we start thinking about Fosdem at all? I know it seems like I, forever away, but it'd be nice to. I mean, if we could. I think. I think yes, we should start talking about it and what we want ChaosCon to be like. Yeah, I think that's what you mean, right? It is what I mean. <laughs> so uh, is that Kevin Maybe. that he has to talk about Fosdem ChaosCon? No, that was a yes that the book is available on Audible. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> the important stuff. Uh, Fosdem is February 3rd or 4th or... It does seem a bit far away still. So when, did, when did you say it was? February what? Isn't that usually February 3rd or 4th, that first work of the, that first week of February? I think you're right. So I, I would imagine that they haven't even they haven't even opened up their uh, their calls for papers yet. Or I'll consider this the first comment on thinking about it. <laughs> we can think about it until next week. All right, that's it from from here. That's it for the agenda. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. It's really great to see everybody. And Austin, there isn't even a website yet. All right. And we'll see many of you in, for all of you that uh, participated in those context working groups later this week. Uh, maybe see some of you in DEI, but nonetheless, we'll see you all around. Thanks for all coming. Right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.